kids across the city, it should be put on hold. More needs to be done because it's a huge task ahead. Government's efforts towards education for all. Whether these schools are providing quality education or not. And inadequacy of the RTE. Well, you know, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Um, when, like, you know, the right to education over here is put into sharp focus, the whole concern about, okay, what, uh, so what is the future of private schools? How will issues of, because it means regulation, it means somebody would be coming to see, you know, how, whether the private schools are giving spaces uh, to the most needy as per the right to education. Similar thing is happening in Pakistan, uh, where we have now education as a fundamental right and under Article 25A of the Constitution, under the 18th Amendment, they will be coming up with the rules and regulations. And I think by April 2010, 11, we will also have a right to education. Now, <laughs> the question then is that, you know, when we come to um, uh, issues of choice, and we come to issues of integration, uh, government needs to be able to revisit its entire program on what are the regulatory regimes. If the regulatory regimes become penalty driven uh, regimes, then you are going to in a way um, uh, squeeze out a very critical space that has been occupied by both registered and non-registered uh, private sector. Now, uh, for we have got, of course, a lot of schools which are registered because that's the only basis for them to get recognition and also get the subsidies from the government or grant in aid, etc. But then we've got a large number of schools which are not registered because the registration procedures is still very draconian. It is, draws its uh, codes from very um, outdated systems where they're asking for really uh, big time costs to be spent by private sector on laboratories, on uh, classroom sizes, on furniture, etc., which are ridiculous. I mean, even the government itself doesn't do it, but of course, they at least have under the planning commission and the schemes of uh, work, they have some um, proper uh, models and they have those protocols that they have to meet. Hardly, often the government itself is unable to meet those. But when it comes to private sector wanting to get itself schools registered, then the government inspectors want to have all of them, uh, all those conditions and criteria to be approved. And if not approved, then a lot of corruption sets in. Now this is, this has to be recognized as a flaw in the system. And you can, perhaps you can see schools moving in a continuum. Um, from being uh, those schools which have come into being to satisfy a need for both excess demand and differentiated demand which takes care of both access and choice issues. Uh, so that's very valid in its own right so it, it emerges there and gradually over time as more and more students come to the school and they can raise the kind of resources whether the resources come from the government or they come from the community or through households, then they can achieve that level of um, um, quality in terms of all physical facilities being present there, um, all criteria being met by as per the government rules. Alternatively, the government can do something as has been done very innovatively in India um, and can be done also in Pakistan and some of it is being done where you have something like a school rating. The more, as the schools improve their quality and they march towards quality, they are rewarded through a set of incentives which in some way or the other provide for all the facilities that the government is asking that they should be there. Should be the same for both government and for private sector. The more equalized these are, the better it would be. Look at the trends of um, uh, resourcing for education. It's not looking very good. India is a little bit better. Pakistan has not been able to push its uh, GDP expenditure uh, to education more, more than maybe 2%. And that is uh, clearly not going to make us meet quality education for all. So we need to come up with innovative ways of financing, but not through punitive actions, but through more integrating and more um, non-adversarial complementary actions. I believe if there is, there is a possibility, if we stop the dichotomized 
view of pushing aside the public versus um, private, uh, the state versus non-state. I think these kind of uh, dichotomies are harming us more than they are helping us. And I think a lot of it is also coming from a West very Western perspective that we have acquired over the years. We are a very mixed lot of people. Um, we work in a very mixed type of manner. We have a way of being able to accommodate and adjust uh, to each other's requirements. Um, the political systems and the political economy of education is such that I do not think we can be seen as either or. It always will be blended and therefore we must take less punitive ways of looking at how we work best together through a more integrated, more open disclosures, more um, non-threatening ways of working for education and providing at the same time to households a more intelligent way of making decisions on what kind of school they would like the children to be in. I am not suggesting that uh, there should be no government or public sector schools. I think there is room for both uh, because of uh, the nature of the complex topography of this place, the spread of our population. We need to have both systems of education but both need to improve uh, qualitatively. From the data that comes out, whether it is Asar India and now also Asar Pakistan, private sector is performing better in terms of learning outcomes uh, and also in terms of costs. The costs per child are lower in private sector than in public sector. However, that doesn't get us off the hook in the sense that private sector needs to hugely improve its quality. If you know our baseline is low in public sector and say the private sector is doing well, it doesn't mean that the child is really getting the kind of quality the child deserves in the subcontinent.